Fire needle aspiration biopsy of the thyroid is performed only for neoplasm purported lesions. Both physical examination and ultrasound scanning imaging are mandatory to recommend such tests. The best option is to make use of a Doppler ultrasound scanner with linear probe from 7.5 MHz up. In poorly equipped areas, even a 3.5 MHz ultrasound scanner can be of some support, no matter the kind of probe, provided the distance between the probe and the skin is increased through the interposition of a gel-filled bud. Solitary or multiple nodes are perfectly neoplastic whenever they are solid and their greater diameter is over 1 cm long. This presumption is strengthened by 1. Asymmetric shape 2. Microcalcifications 3. Irregular or specular edges 4. Capsular invasion The fine needle aspiration biopsy may fairly frequently give adverse reactions such as 1. Bradycardia and hypotension, 2. Bleeding, 3. Ecop due to the accidental puncture of the phrenic nerve, 4. Two-tone voice due to accidental puncture of the recurrent nerve. We require 1. 120 ml disposable syringe, 2. A lancet tipped 22 gauge needle, 3. Three news lights, 4. A plastic container to transfer the specimens. 5. Alcohol at 95% as a fixative, fluid or spray. 6. A syringe holder to enable the operator to aspirate the specimen with one hand. The syringe holder is harmed and disarmed in this way. If no syringe holder is available, there are two alternatives. The first is to make a homemade tool with an intravenous injection plastic tube. In this case, for sampling, the aspiration is still needed. The second is to sample by capillarity, without aspiration. For sampling, ultrasound scan guiding is recommended and even mandatory when the nodes are impalpable due to either the size or deep location. Whenever such equipment is not available on the spot, only palpable nodes can be targeted. With the patient lying supine, the operator approaches the patient from the back of his head. There is no need for local anesthesia. After disinfecting the skin, the operator's dominant hand grasps the syringe. The other hand interlocks and immobilizes the node between the second and the third finger. The operator inserts the needle into the lesion at an angle of 65-70 degrees to the plane of the skin in the direction of the patient's feet. As soon as the operator is sure that the tip of the needle has penetrated and is roughly in the middle of the lesion, he begins to aspirate pulling up on the syringe plunger. As aspiration is maintained at a steady rate, the needle moves forth and back by approximately 4 to 8 mm, while changing the inclination each time. In the meantime, the hand rotates twice. After 5 or 6 times, the movement is discontinued. While the tip of the needle is still in the node, the plunger is gently released. Immediately afterwards, the needle is extracted. Whenever the syringe comes out filled with blood, which actually prevents from the interpretation of the cytological test, it is better to rule out the specimen and take another sample. Whenever the syringe holder is not available, the same maneuver necessitates a second operator helping. The first operator drives the needle, while the second pulls up the plunger at the beginning and releases the aspiration at the end.
Another way to proceed is through sampling by capillarity. In this case, neither syringe holder nor aspiration is needed. A single operator places a needle between the thumb and the forefinger of the dominant hand. With the other hand, he immobilizes the node to be targeted. The needle penetrates into the lesion as previously described, with the same back and forth movement. Some specimen enters the needle by capillarity. Finally, the needle is removed from the lesion. If sampling was carried out through aspiration, the needle is disconnected from the syringe temporarily. At that moment, we have some specimen within the needle and some in the main body of the syringe. First, the operator drops the specimen through the back hole of the needle upon the slide. Then, he aspirates 5 to 10 milliliters of air into the syringe and splashes the specimen still in the syringe over the slide by fast pushing the plunger. Secondly, a further 5 to 10 milliliters of air is aspirated into the syringe. The needle is engaged again and the plunger pushed down. In this way, any specimen still left within the needle splashes over the slide. Whenever the operator realizes that there is more of the specimen inside the main body of the syringe, the cycle is repeated over another new slide. If the sampling was carried out by capillarity, the only maneuver is to aspirate 5 to 10 milliliters of air into a new syringe, engage the needle, and splash the spaceman within the needle by fast pushing the plunger. If the amount of sample on one slide is too much, it may be spread partly over another slide in this way. There are two maneuvers for smearing. One, with two samples available and the specimen fairly liquid, smearing is carried out by applying one slide over the other. Two, if the specimen is solid, it is smeared by making use of another slide. The fixative should remain ready upon the table as fixing must not be delayed. The operator picks up the aerosol fixative and sprays it over the slides for 3 or 4 seconds from a minimum distance of 25 centimeters. Within approximately 10 minutes, the product dries and thereafter the sample is ready to be shipped. Whenever the aerosol fixative is not available, alcohol at 95% must be contained in a closed bottle to prevent it from evaporating. The slide is submerged into the fixative for a few seconds, then it is withdrawn, is dried on its lower side and laid to dry on the table for 5 minutes more. When fixed, the sample is put in a dry, closed and sealed bottle. A label is firmly attached to the side of the bottle. On the label, name, surname, date of birth, date of sampling, type and location of sampling, and diameter of the lesion are reported. Then the bottle is packed and shipped with the address of the final destination. For reporting, the classification THY is used. Sulla roba solida c'è sta 